welcome to my channel. This is my second step-by-step -step painting guide for Marvel Crisis Protocol. First, we're going to start off with some base coats of Vallejo's Gory Red from their game color line mixed with some black. Omega Red is a fantastic sculpt from Atomic Mass Games. I was very excited to paint this model. I decided to glue on the coils and do a Zenithal Prime using a black primer and then a light gray primer from above to create some instant easy shadows. Our next step is to layer on Gory Red to build up our midtone. If you haven't purchased or made a wet palette, I highly suggest starting with one. Next step is to do our pre-highlights for the red. And this is one way you can highlight red. Uh, some people like to use orangey colors to build up the highlights. I personally don't think it comes off as red, so I do a pre-highlight with white. And then the next step after this is going to be to start glazing the mid-tones onto the white. My inspiration for my color palette on this model was from the Tactics card Carbonadium Synthesizer. And so I pretty much copied the exact look of what the art is on the card. When you highlight the legs, you can be creative where you put the highlights uh, because the pants are kind of baggy. And in the art, I wanted it to look a little bit more muscular. So I kind of just drew, drew in muscle lines. Next we're going to mix our glaze with one part bloody red and one part gory red and we want to make sure that we add enough water to thin it down so it's somewhat transparent. your glaze you want to make sure that it's not too watery because we're not trying to make a wash here we're, we're keeping it out of the recesses and we're kind of just like thinly layering it over the white areas and once you actually put it on the model it, it'll start popping pretty fast
to do the final highlight, we're going to go back in with the dead white and do another pre-highlight. And you're going to have it smaller than the original pre-highlighted areas. And then we're going to glaze in a pure blood red. If you wanted to, you could even leave some of the white showing to make it look even brighter. It all depends on the look that you're going for. Next, we're going to go with a black ink from Vallejo's Game Ink line. And we're trying to just create more contrast where the muscle lines are. I'd use the card art as a guide to where you'd want to specifically put the black ink. Now that we're done with the red areas, we'll move on to the white armor and face and start shading the model. I decided to go with Vallejo's dark blue gray from their model color line. When we shade the face here, we kind of want to make a wash with the paint. Our next step is to highlight the face using Ghost Gray. Fill in the eye sockets with whatever red color is still on your palette that you like. Here I'm going back in with the Ghost Gray, and that's a Vallejo game color, and just cleaning things up a little bit. Typically you're going to make mistakes when doing the eyes, but it's really easy to just go in and fix things up as you go. Ice Yellow for the teeth. I highly recommend picking up Ice Yellow. I've been using it a lot since I got it. Next we're going to glaze in Electric Blue mixed in with the Ghost Gray on the face areas. One more final highlight for the face with Ghost Gray. Now let's move on to the hair. We're going to mix in leather brown with our ice yellow, about a 50-50 mix, and just lob it on the hair there. Our first highlight is with ice yellow. 
I'm using a number one brush here uh, from Windsor & Newton. And when I'm doing hair, I try to really pick out the individual strands. And from a distance, I think it looks really good. Spend, spend extra time on this and uh, you'll be happy with the result. Our second highlight is going to be a mixture of white and the ice yellow. And so when we're doing the hair here, try to see where the light's going to hit the strands and um, you know, pretty much put it where you want. As long as you have differentiation between different areas of the hair, it typically comes out good. Next, line in the eyebrows with your base color for the hair. Next up, we're going to work on the armor, and we're going to mix in electric blue with the two other grays that we've been using, and start working on a mid-tone. Here I'm adding layers to the arms, and I'm actually going to use the same color for the armor, but I decided to go in and work on the layers here. Try to use the shadows that naturally happen with the zenithal highlighting and work your way up from there. I left the recesses in the arms a little bit darker, uh, so this way there's a, a better contrast uh, between this and the highlights that will build up. I'm also adding this color to the coils to create a little bit more interest in the color variation between the zenithal highlight and the gray and then we'll also end up highlighting this with ghost gray and I think uh, I really like how the result came out here. In this step, we're going to mix the ghost gray into the mid-tone that we created. You can see me mix the paint here, and uh, it's a nice kind of light bluish gray color. And we're going to feather the paint in where you want the reflections to look. So it's kind of a, a non-metallic metal look. And when we're feathering, you put the paint down on the model, and then take your brush wipe off the paint and add some water and then pull the paint down and blend it with the water as you go and you'll see me do the technique here on the shoulder pads
here I'm using dark blue gray to create a reflection off the top of the armor and I'm copying the art on the card here so when I paint models I like to have a nice reference to look at and get inspired with and pretty much copy it and and put it onto the model that I'm painting um, sometimes I make it a little bit more my own and modify it a little bit but I really like the look that uh, the art had and um, tried to really apply it to the 3D model here. Next I've pulled some pure ghost gray and I'm applying it next to the line that I made and I'm actually making it look a little bit more wavy here and having the light next to the dark creates a nice contrast and gives the illusion of the non-metallic metal. this frame I'm feathering the back side of the armor. Our next step is to take the ghost gray and edge highlight parts of the armor where you want the light to be reflecting the most. Here I'm highlighting parts of the belt and other white areas. Next we're going to work on the arms and we'll use the ghost gray and dead white to layer the highlights and do the veins and other details. I'm thinning down the paint here a little bit more than I normally would because it helps create a nicer gradient from the shading to the highest point on the arms.
we're going to do the details on the arms and the model does have some veins sculpted on you can actually paint veins wherever you want and get creative here Here's where we're going to finish off the coils by edge highlighting and basically layering as well the ghost gray. I try to follow the light and the shadow that's created by the zenithal highlight and it really helps speed up the process here and helps you know where to put the paint. After you finish highlighting the coils, we're going to actually do some extra shading with dark blue-gray and define the gaps in between the coil links uh, where it may not be dark enough from the primer. To finish off the model, we're going to paint the base. For a more complete guide on how I do the base, you can check out my Jean Grey video on my YouTube page. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.